Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. Of course, I am Sharonda, and I am your host. And as I promised, we're going to get off into comprehensive sex education. But before we can get off into it, we have to deal with some of the foundation things that we have uh, learned over the years. And today I'm going to talk about the purity culture. I'm going to talk about the abstinence pledge and promise rings. And basically what all of this stuff actually means, right? So I was born in 80 and I remember when cable TV came out, okay? I want to say we got cable when I was maybe eight, nine years old. But I definitely know by 1990, we had cable. It might have only went up to channel 35 because back then I don't think the cable was extended. But, um... We nonetheless we did have cable, um, and with cable came a lot of evangelism on television, and a lot of TV evangelists were able to spread out their message, right? Um, and there was an influx of young people getting on the bandwagon with the purity culture. Because it was just a, a wide range way to spread the message. Why did the evangelists or the, the pastors want to spread um, the message of purity culture? We had just came from a history of the free love movement with women no longer wearing their bras, with them being hippies and trying mushrooms and acids and weed and all of this kind of stuff like that. So they kind of felt like the youth was out of control. And by this time, this particular group of people had started reproducing children. Like, they started having their own families. So the children kind of grew up um, a lot looser, meaning they, they didn't have a lot of boundaries and structure, right? Because they came from parents that didn't have a lot of boundaries and structure. Topping that off with the drug epidemic that we have, with people transitioning from marijuana to uh, cocaine to crack co uh, yeah, marijuana, cocaine to then crack cocaine. We had that going on. Um, and then we had the influx of the prisons being filled up and no fathers in the home. And the church felt like we got to save them. We, we got to save this next generation. And the only way we could do it is we have to promote abstinence and we have to give them some type of guilt and shame around having premarital sex. And the idea of it was to combat teen pregnancy. Completely understand that. But it's a difference when the church come in and they try to combat teen pregnancies and sex educators coming in and they're trying to combat teen pregnancies. The church basically said, abstain. Abstinence, don't do it. And they even came up with a way to give you your virginity back. If you hadn't given it to somebody else, there was a prayer and a pledge that you could say, and you became a virgin again. Y'all, I thought this was one of the most insane things that I had ever seen. And basically, once you said that prayer and that pledge, you said that I'm going to remain a virgin a second time around until I get my husband. Right? These are real things that are literally going on down south. Like, this is not anything that I'm making up. This is what I know. I have seen down south. Okay. So now you've, um, if you were a virgin or a born, born again virgin again, you've said this pledge, right? You've um, basically asked for forgiveness or asked to be covered to keep your mind and your body under control. I get it, right? So now the evidence of it is you wearing a purity ring. And you wore this purity ring as an outward expression to everyone that you were a virgin and that you were, excuse me, and that you were maintaining your chastity until you got married, right? I wish that this was the case. I wish that it was cookie cutter just like that. But what we know is there were a lot of people that were walking around with the purity rings, basically saying that they were maintaining their virginity and they were doing other things sexual outside of penetrative sex. Meaning that they were doing other things 
working around penetrative sex, meaning they were still having oral sex, they were having anal sex, they were fondling each other. They were pretty much doing everything but going all the way to to have um, penetrative sex, meaning I'm going to do everything but break my virginity, right? So they found loopholes is pretty much what the kids were doing. Or either they were outright having sex and then they were just basically representing themselves um, in a very dishonest way. You basically put them in a position to have to lie to their friends and family and say that they were maintaining their virginity when they knew that they were not maintaining their virginity, right? Um, what happens is when you have kids that are part of these organizations, right, especially faith-based organizations, and then they so happen to get pregnant. Now their families got to do something about it. Normally they got to take them out of town and get an abortion or either get a, a illegal abortion with, with somebody, somebody that's not even licensed to be able to do it. All to be able to save an image and a reputation. All right. So moving forward, I became um, a teenager. And I clearly remember joining this choir called, I'm going to say it was just a mass choir because I don't. I don't want no shit. <laughs> but it was a very large choir here in Baton Rouge. One of the largest they had between six and eight hundred teenagers in the choir. If you watching this video, then you already you from Baton Rouge and you already know the name of the choir that I'm talking about, right? I remember the adults having to come together and have a meeting at our choir rehearsal because the kids were using their homes as hotels. Literally, they was being run through, run through, which lets you know that even though we were out there singing and praising the Lord and telling everybody about the goodness of Christ and come get saved, those same kids were still being sexually active. But on the outside, it looks as though everything is pure and all of these kids are just got a certain type of walk with Christ because they falling out and singing and Speaking in tongues and rolling all over the floor and doing all of this kind of stuff. But in their own time, they are still sexual. Now, my thing is, you know, I believe that you could be both. I believe that you could be saved and you could be sexual. That's my personal belief because I believe God created us to be both, right? But this is basically about uh, the purity culture and abstinence, right? Those young people were having to pretend as though... Uh, they were not sexually active to save face for adults. When I was thinking to myself just recently, if there was a, a choir that had six to eight hundred teenagers in it, there was never a conversation about comprehensive sex education, even though all of those adults knew that a lot of those teenagers was having sex with each other. But it was something that was overlooked and kind of swept under the rug. And of course, there was a meeting about uh, their homes being used as hotels. But that was because people were using their personal space. It wasn't necessarily about the kids having sex. It was about the kids having sex at their house. You get what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I have been one to believe that the peer to culture does not work. I believe that the peer to culture is a bunch of bullshit, personally. Uh, I believe that it does not have any long-term effects. I don't. Um, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with having a, a, a walk with God and a personal relationship and your own reasoning why you're choosing to abstain. But I don't think that guilt and shame should be the re that shouldn't be at the forefront of it. And I personally believe that the purity culture uses guilt and shame as a tool to get young people to abstain. And the end result is they're not abstaining. Okay. So again, this video wasn't decided, uh, it wasn't designed to be a long video at all. Um, I'm just putting some foundation out there before we get off into comprehensive sex education, all right? Well, with that being said, you all enjoy the rest of your day. You all be blessed. Until next time, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Tell somebody to follow Sharonda Back Night Parker.